our heart, and literally it was the dream in our heart and a little bit of money in our pocket right. that got us over to Sydney. Exactly. And there's a backstory to that, but we're going to start cooking. Yeah. We are going to start cooking. Because you tried to go to Sydney twice, didn't you? We did, before that. And, and then both the... times Phil found out where you'd gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was pregnant with Daniel. It was 1975. Um, the, the, the real, the first moment we heard about Sydney, where it went into Phil's heart, we were in the 48 Oxford Terrace on, one, on our Monday night house church. And Alan, uh, an elder in the church, had a son who had a church in Sydney. And we were just, was filled with all hippies and, it was packed, the, the house that we were running. And Alan said to Phil, um, we need a church like this in Sydney. We're, Sydney, we'd never even thought of Sydney as a place and went into Phil's heart. Sydney, okay, and that was 1971. Remember Phil? We had that Taramara outreach and people got saved. People that we know today got saved yeah, but, in that. But uh, even though we had big success, it was not the right time. So we went back to New Zealand. It was awful. We were just, Phil was down. He's like, I've missed the call. I'm just going to Took up painting, about. gave up the ministry. We sewed We gave it up. Never thought oh, we'd be, never thought we'd come there again. Gone. I got a job as a postman. Yep. Uh, and uh, <laughs> delivering messages to people, which I guess <laughs> still, still am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. She's still a and, postman. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so is Simon. <laughs> Uh, we'll do we know how to deliver? <laughs> well, ooh, well, like a postman, we always oh, deliver. Yeah. Describe that day when you were out on the post run and the oh, Lord well, spoke to you about Yeah, I was. I I'm pretty well could take you there today, actually, because it was like such a relief to hear a vo the voice of God. I was just so happy because I'd been so discouraged and I felt broken, actually. It felt like I just didn't have any strength to get up and do much at all. So. He spoke to me and said, go start a church in Littleton. But I was just out. glad to know that I was still called. We went out there, nothing much happened over the three years we were there. The 30 people pretty much remained the same. 30, I think we went from about 15 to 30 people. Yeah, but we had some amazing salvations. But yeah, but, but uh, after two years two of being there, I went on a trip to India. Oh, yeah. And on the way right. through, stopped in Sydney, mm. uh, the plane, touched down in Sydney and God said to me on the way there, now's the time. And you said to us, Chris and I are finally have got the go to go to Sydney. And so our response was, you know, well, I'm sad to see you go. That was it. You know, I mean, what am I going to say? But then during the worship, uh, and that was a day where I actually was worshipping, instead of thinking about something, um, I heard the Lord speak to me. And I, this is, I've never heard this since and it had no promise to it. It was five words, and you are going to. Isn't that Clear as crystal. Yeah. So as we were driving home, I said to Helen, um, I feel the Lord spoke to me. And as soon as I said it, she said, got it. So we said, why don't we fast? And we looked and said, why would we bother fasting? Right, you knew. We knew. And then we went to Phil and Chris. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was really, it was very sobering. Because they said, thrilled, but you have to come on your own steam. We don't have like a missions organisation. No, no problem. Yeah, we, 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 we had nobody Nothing. actually no. giving us money or no. setting us up or Nothing. no interest nights. So Simon, <laughs> um, you and Phil arrived in Sydney first and then Helly and I and the kids arrived maybe a couple of weeks later. Literally. You, guys, you got jobs. And our whole family went and stayed on Simon's yep. and Helen's floor. Yep. We lived there for maybe four in weeks. St Ives. Yep. St Ives. It was an adventure. We hired off the Catholic church the hall they had across the road in oaks avenue and on the first uh, and we just went took all our meeting down there and then mark and bernie that's when we they walked up. in that night now your sister had had an influence in you hadn't she, she yeah our, my sister had led us to the lord and then we were on a break up at noosa we went to the assemblies of god church in noosa and ran into this guy called Chris Chetland Jones. I know, yeah, I oh remember who was Who was from Bulgola. Yeah, yeah. And he said, there's a new church starting yeah. on the Northern Beaches area. And we where. lived in Colorado. Right. Right. And, and you know, there's no mobile phone. It's right. like no Google. Yeah. No, no. Nothing. So he said, I'll that. call you when we get back to Sydney and let you know. We called him and called him. We never, we could never get him. And one right. Sunday afternoon, I said to my, 
I don't know, mate, we just gotta, we've just got to go to church, so we'll just go anywhere. Right. And Mark said, let me just try him one more time. And he picked up. <laughs> oh. And so we jumped, said he said, surf DY he said Surf Club, right. six o'clock, mm. right. Sunday night, and it was 10 to six. Right. <laughs> So we jumped in the car, drove down the car park, you know the story. And, what uh, did that tell us? Tell so I drove into the car park know. and it was all dark pitch. and we thought, What's that? Mate, Why we got it? the details wrong. What yeah. happened? You know, and we only just had that thought and that mentioned to each other and then a guy comes flying into the parking lot. <laughs> I remember very clearly in his turquoise green Ford Cortina. Yes. And, and a, it was Paul O'Connell. <laughs> and I remember he just waving his hand out of the thing. And he didn't get out of the car, he just sort of screamed out the window. And said, are you guys looking for the church? We went, yeah, he says, follow me. <laughs> We've moved. <laughs> and that we followed night. him up the road. Yeah. And of course, you had apparently had said to yeah, Paul. Yeah, I said, I said to yeah. Paul, go back down, because it be, might be somebody looking for us. Yeah. So and good. we don't know oh, where they are. So it's incredible little oh. hinges yeah. that huge doors oh. swing on, swing right? Up. And then so we, we followed him up, walked into the back of the Catholic school hall. You know, very clearly, it sounds a bit cliche and corny, but we and squeezed each other's right. hands and we said, we're home. Because we didn't oh. know to say that. Like that was yeah. just the that exact was. feeling that we felt. Yeah. We looked at, at each other and we were like, we're home. We're really home. People they, find their place. Yeah, they I hear it all over the yeah. world. We create we're home. the atmosphere, the culture yeah. of the presence of God and then people come in and, and they do say it. People come up to all of us yeah. all the time mm -hmm. and say, I'm home. Do you know what? Those two words are the nucleus of everything that we are all these years later, 40 years later. People they, find their place. Yeah, One of the things that people um, are wondering about is um, people look at the team that we've had for 40 years and say, well, how in the world do you do that? That's a good point. And um, what do you think? The, well, the length of time. Uh, one thing I think is this. Mm. We actually became each other's family. In some ways we were forced to, which helped us. I think eating together, holidaying together, I think those things. It's part of the picture. Because we did a lot of holidaying. And we showed up at the beach every Monday together with the kiddies. I think we're amongst us, the capacity to be friends and still have respect and honour for how God has positioned us yeah. and led us. Yeah. And you guys have always been honouring of Chris and I in the recognition of that leadership. Mm -hmm. And yet we, we can still do life together. So this one of the things that um, I, I guess we all are as pioneers, but we haven't thought about it, have we? I would never see myself as a pioneer, right. but we obviously are. Right. Uh, I think C3 has pioneered a bunch of things. We're the first church in Australia to record live praise and worship. Yep. Yes. And uh, we, uh, I'm not sure if we're the first, but certainly we were amongst the first, maybe in the world, of churches to have a school of creative arts. Yeah, totally. Where we promoted arts, drama, film and video, painting, yeah. all these things, because they were kind of like re regarded at worst as something that was of the flesh, soulish and sinful, and at best something that was tolerated by, and they were the weird crowd in, in a church. And well, I think things. that pioneering thing in you was the genesis of, of pioneering you know, church planting everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. yeah. yeah well, we're, church planting wasn't even a thing. It wasn't a thing. No. Well, but no, God, no the, the pioneering thing, I, I don't know, if, you know how much credit you can really take. And, well, I certainly don't feel like that. I'm just doing what I, I got told to do. Go plant 10 churches in 10 major cities around the world. He confirmed it. He said, look at this, Decapolis, 10 cities. I remember that. Ooh, I, remember, I remember that conversation. And so we went and did that, sent these guys out all around the world. Mm. And within four years, Mm -hmm. At 10 churches in 10 major cities. Yeah, what Ooh. next? It's astonishing. <laughs> exactly. But I think like what listeners need to remember is all those major moves forward were done on the back of prayer and fasting together. That's exactly right. Like it wasn't just, oh, this is a good idea. What yeah. do you reckon? It yep. was, we sought God sure. and, and the Holy Spirit fell and it seemed right to all of us. Yeah. And if ever yes. one of us has said, I feel like doing this and the whole has said, mm, we don't do it. Right. Not even you. No, I wouldn't. You know? I think also that if you're going to pioneer, everybody has to be prepared to do anything. And that's a big part of our team. You, I mean, 
We've all been the children's church leader. We, this guy was our administrator uh, for a while. I kept uh, on going up to my point of incompetence, <laughs> <laughs> moving sideways and going doing something else. I mean, you've been the Bible college, you've been a, a leader. Children's church, children's Bible church. college, pastor, pastor, pastor of the pastors. Overseer of uh, Europe. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, and some of the moves could appear like not always an upward trajectory. Some of them are like sideways. Some of them could appear even going sideways and down. And, uh, it, you, and yet it's not the position or the title. It's the, because we've got the relationship with think, whatever needs to be done, whatever I need to be, I'll be there. And the ability to change gears uh, for that, I think, creates an A-team. I remember years ago, I think we had somebody was talking about this. And I think the comment came out that, uh, I think it was in my, my case this time, but it was probably for all of us. My gift is to do what needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's, people say, what's your spiritual gift? Uh, to do what needs to be done. <laughs> That's great. So if I have to lead, I'll lead. Yes. It might not be my spiritual gift, but I have to do it. Yeah. And that's that's that principle that we were living before we sort of heard about it. Uh, the team you're in. Yes. It's more important than the team you lead. Yeah. What are the biggest risks we've taken? Oh, for us, it was definitely leaving the shores of going Sydney and planning and going to play church. that first church. We're very much into the unknown. I think we were so full of vision. Mm. Uh, and so happy and keen. Yeah. I think that a, a healthy measure of naivety was good because they actually got us there. Yeah. But then when we faced it, when you got there, you realised how much of a risk it was. I think also, you know, I, the relationship uh, calms down the level of risk because you, I knew, and hopefully you knew, that if anything went skew with we'd be there for you oh, yeah. oh no we definitely knew that and so that has yep. got to be more valuable yes than an organization that is just you know saying here's some resources on your way because if there is no heartfelt relationship we would there would be no way on earth we'd let you uh, suffer and we've had people that I've called back out of their position because they are struggling they're yeah. suffering and the kids are suffering yeah, yeah. we just yeah. Not, yeah. come back come, come back, back. Yeah. What about you, Simon? Uh, it's, it's a, it's an, I, I don't know, to tell you the truth. I, I, I would probably say buying a house. Yeah. Because all the rest of it just seemed like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, going to England seemed like whoopee-doo. Going to Australia, well, fantastic. So I would so strangely, I'd say buying a house. So you saw all that stuff as adventure rather yeah, than risk. Yeah, I still do. Yeah. It's a great adventure. Yeah. It's awfully costly, yeah. but a wonderful adventure. So it I, is. So strangely, I'd say my first house was my most nervy risk moment. Yeah. Looking back, you you can calculate risk more so yeah, than looking right. forward. And I would say uh, yeah. the children factor, taking children with you on the journey, it's a risk that you've got to constantly mollify by giving attention to them in other ways that you can't as normal parents. Yeah would do. I mean, you never have a Sunday off. But I think that's what kept us going because we were doing that together, yeah. our kids together, yeah. you know. Our fruitfulness together is always going to be greater than our fruitfulness on our own. Oh. You make any sacrifice to yeah. keep that, yeah. that unity and that spirit of friendship yeah. alive. And when you realise that your destiny is together, yeah. like it isn't just for a little bit of life, a couple of years, but it's actually you've been called together that it's a respect for God saying he called us together so we better make yeah. this work because out of that it's going to come fruitfulness that yeah. is beyond our imagination and I think even now we're in a we're at the end of a compounding effort yes. that has been together and it'll get easier with more flourishing and more fruitfulness that'll come out of the fruit that we've already yeah. you know, seen and we're right now we're seeing it. We're like there have been there have been sacrifices and terrible tears and heartache within our families for whatever reasons, sickness or whatever, trials with kids. And now we are seeing the the, the, the turning of that page. Exactly. Where we're seeing the sacrifice that we made and our kids. They are now picking up the gauntlet and saying, "We're running with you, yeah. Mum and Dad. We're running with you." Sure. And, and I just think that's, that's the greatest joy, isn't it? You've greatest joy. But you've had to, we've had to get through all that mucky but that's blood, stuff, sweat, and tears. Yeah, yeah. That, that has happened, yeah. and now we're just entering into a new season. We're going to be celebrating 40.
40 years. And for me personally, I think, for me, like the risk or whatever in the future will be to keep growing and to take the risk of what God is asking us to do into our future, mm -hmm. Phil and I, and all of us, like we're trusting you, Lord, that you've got our back. And we are, we're still pioneers. You know, and I mean, that's a pretty dangerous thing to say to the Lord. We're still pioneers. Send us wherever. But that's that's the risk we take as sure. servants of the Lord. And I'm happy to do it.